All right, welcome to your lectures, your lecture videos on chapter seven. So chapter seven, we're all, we're talking about a lot of quantifying masses uh, and atoms and doing what we call stoichiometry. And we'll get into that in probably a couple of videos. But for now, we want to start off with doing some practice uh, quantifying masses of things. Okay, so there should be some notes in your hand um, from a previous lecture talking about how to calculate a formula mass. And a formula mass is just the mass of all atoms in the formula. And I apologize for my handwriting. It's, it's uh, wonderful this evening. Um, but in order to do that, we need to know the correct formula. So hopefully your nomenclature is up to snuff and you recognize that phosphorus tribromide has the formula of PBr3. Okay, so if I want to know the formula mass, I go to the periodic table. And we go to the periodic table and we look up phosphorus and bromine on the periodic table and the number that is generally right below the symbol is the atomic mass okay so we have one phosphorus in our formula so one times the mass of phosphorus which is 30.97 amu and then we have three bromines, so three times the bromine is three times the mass of bromine, which is 79.90 AMU. And we get uh, 239.7. For the mass of the bromine. Now here's a place where we want to pay attention to our sig figs, okay? So I just did a counting number, three, so counting numbers are exact, so I don't have to worry about the three for sig figs, but I have four sig figs in that mass, so I'm going to track right there at that fourth sig fig. And then it's an addition problem, okay? So when I put that into the calculator, I get two uh, excuse me, 270.67. Okay, and remember our addition rule is concerned with decimal places. So that 239.70, we're tracking at the tenths place. So my final answer should have the same number of decimal places as the fewest decimal places in the answer. So being careful for sig figs, I should have come out with an answer of 270.7 AMU. Right, so the important thing here with formula mass is to add up the masses of the atoms in the formula. Okay, I have one phosphorus, three bromines, so I add up the masses of each atom. Let's calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. Now I should take a moment and remind you, pause these videos, give this a try, and then restart the video, see if you get the same answer that I do, okay? So, in order to calculate the formula mass correctly, I need to know the formula for calcium nitrate. So again, we're doing a little bit of test on your nomenclature, which is in a previous chapter. What is the formula for calcium nitrate? And hopefully you came up with CaNO3 
two. Okay, so the formula mass, we're gonna add up the masses of all of the atoms in that formula. So if I go to the periodic table, I have one calcium, and on the periodic table, it'll say that the calcium is 40.08 AMU. Next is nitrate, or excuse me, the nitrogen in nitrate. And the two after the parentheses says that I have two nitrate, nitrogens, <laughs> sorry, I keep misspeaking, two nitrogens in that formula. So two times nitrogen, two times 14.01 AMU. And then oxygens, there are three oxygens in the nitrate and then two nitrates, so that means six oxygens. And oxygen is 16 AMU. Right, so when we do that math, we get 40.08 plus 28.02 plus 96 it gives us 164.10 AMU. All right, moving on. So let's check our math. So this particular answer here for the phosphorus tribromide is not quite correct for sig figs. Okay, if we're really careful on the sig figs, we should be 270.7 AMU for that answer. But our other answer, 164.10, spot on. All right, so our next concept is percent mass. And in previous lecture material, uh, we talked about percent mass, and the idea here is that we have, to calculate percent mass, you have the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole times 100. Okay, so in our case, we want to know the mass of, uh, the percent mass of bromine in the bromine uh, phosphorus tribromine. So our mass of the part is three times the bromine because there are three bromines in our formula. And we go to the periodic table and we get 79.90 for the mass of bromine. So that comes out to be 239.70. tracking at the fourth sig fig. Okay, because the three is a counting number. That's an exact number, so we only care about the four sig figs in the mass. And then in the previous question, I think the first slide on this, um, on this presentation, we found that the mass of the whole for phosphorus tribromide was 270. Point seven. Okay, and because we're doing um, an extra calculation, I'm going to give those extra digits to this calculation. Okay, so our mass of the part is 239.7, mass of the whole is 270.67. times 100. That times 100 gives us our percent and will come out to be 88.56 percent bromine. Let's see how we did. 88.56 percent.
right? So again, I want to encourage you to pause the video regularly. Every time we come up to a problem, pause the video and see if you can come up with the same answer. All right, so the formula mass of carbon dioxide. So hopefully you came up with a formula of CO2. One carbon, carbon, singular, first element, we omit the mono, otherwise we, we would say monocarbon dioxide, but we just say carbon dioxide, di meaning two oxides, so two oxygens. So one times carbon, 12.01 AMU, two times the oxygen, so 2 times 16 AMU, comes out to be 44.01 AMU. Now based on the um, lecture material that you received either in class or um, via Zoom, we also know that AMU, in this case, gives us grams per mole. Okay, and we're going to get into that later in this in in these videos that when we scale things up from individual molecules and atoms to moles of mo molecules and atoms the numbers stay the same. So the 12.01 that you get from the periodic table, the 16 you get from the periodic table, those numbers stay the same, but the units change. So instead of AMUs, you get 12.01 grams per mole, or 16 grams per mole. Or in the end, the formula mass is 44.01 grams per mole. And that's going to become important a little bit later on in the chapter. All right, so question four says, what is the percent carbon in carbon dioxide? So remember, we we're talking about the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole times 100. That's how we get percent mass. In this case, the mass of the part is the mass of the carbon, and the mass of the whole is the CO2. Okay, so we just calculated the mass of CO2, so we don't need to worry about that so much. But our formula is CO2. So my mass of the part is 12.01 AMU, or grams per mole. Right, so that's our part. So we have 12.01 divided by the mass of the whole, which we just calculated in the previous slide, was 44.01 times 100. Comes, about, comes out to be 27.29%. All right, so we're going to, go, uh, going to stop this video here and we'll pick it up right where we left off with the next video.